Okay, so I wanted to make a tutorial on how to create snow in Blender. Um, this is a reactive snow, it will just respect overhangs because I know there's a plugin for it, but that plugin doesn't really respect overhangs and it's also not that dynamic. And I think we can put this off in geometry nodes pretty well. So let's do that. I now have a current, uh, just a scene open, it just has a monkey in a box and a plane. And I'm using Blender 3.1, but this will work with anything that is above 3.0 or 3.0 included. So the first thing I want to do is I want to have this cube and this monkey grouped together. So inside the single collection, go up here in your outliner, you have a collection one, I will just take the cube, I will take the monkey, put them in here. And then we can start working with the geometry nodes. I will go to my geometry node setup, it might look different from yours. Uh, but basically just select the plane or whatever object you want to be making the snow and click new to add the geometry nodes. So the first thing you want to do is go into the inputs and add a little input called collection. This is so we can bring in this collection into here. And there it is now, I will just get collection 1. So now we have access to these two objects, the cube and the monkey. I will then use collection info to plug this input into this collection. Now I have access to the geometry, although it is important to set this to relative. Uh, then we also need to uh, talk about how we're actually going to do this. Uh, basically, if this is our plane, if this is the cube, I suppose we're going to cast a bunch of rays from above. Uh, rays that hit, whenever the rays hit, they're going to have a point and that's where we're going to spawn in our mesh, basically. Uh, that's the idea. So to do that, we're going to use the ray cast node and the target geometry is what it is testing against. We wanted to test against uh, absolutely everything, the plane and everything in the collection. So to do that, I will use a joint geometry where I'll plug in my original the plane basically and this collection of objects and that is what we're testing against uh, but also uh, just so this is not in the way I will output my spline into over here and I also hit a joint geometry in the end so we can use some stuff uh, so where are the rays actually going to be coming from well we'll use the bounding box for that if I just show you this is the bounding box there it is uh, you can see it, it com encompasses everything except my original mesh uh, because uh, yes uh, so the collection info you actually need to realize it realize instances because before you realize these instances they're basically just points in space that's coming out of the collection info so anyway now we have the bounding box of absolutely everything uh, we can see that if I move the mesh inside although it's going to be if I take the monkey for example and I move it it changes the bounding box appropriately uh, so now we only need the top face of this bounding box. To do that, we will do separate geometry. And we will separate based on the index uh, of the faces. So take the index, and what I'm going to say, if the index is equal to 2, so to do that I'll use a compare node, where I'll compare with the number of 2 and a very small epsilon. If the index is equal to 2, separate it right there. And now you can see we only have the top of our bounding box. And what we need to do then is just subdivide it a little bit because it only has four points. But we need to have many because those are going to be the sources of our rays. So plug in a subdivide mesh. I'll set this to maximum for now. You can see it now has a lot of geometry. And I guess I no longer really need to uh, see these points. So I'll cut that out. And then we need to move them because basically we did cast our rays. And now we want to move the point which we cast the rays from, which is just this geometry right here. Move that point to where the ray hit. Okay, so we're using this geometry for two purposes. And to do that, we'll just use a set position node to set the position of all the points. Pick the geometry and take the hit position to be the position. Okay, now if I output this, we should see that what has happened is all of our uh, geometry on the top, the bounding box has been like glued down to the surface. Okay, so uh, that's what we want. So then we're going to take all this mesh and convert it into points. So you will do. Uh, or rather to volume. So if I do points to volume and then I do volume to mesh uh, and then I decrease the radius we will see that now we are getting there. We're getting there. However, uh, I would say that we might need to um, have some more points. Uh, this looks fine. So the first way to make this look a bit better is to give it a shade, uh, shade smooth. So set shade smooth, turn that on. Uh, that looks better now. And we need to give it some randomness. So after the volume to mesh, we want to do a noise texture. And the noise texture, oh, I mean, we want to do a set position, my bad. Set position that uses the noise texture, but not directly. Because we need to shift the coordinates uh, of the noise texture using a vector mat. We're just going to subdivide it, but I mean, 
subtract 0 0.5 because it usually gives RGB but we want coordinates that are around the center of the world so plug that into here and it is very strong to fix that I'll just add sh uh, shift it to duplicate this node and set it to scale and now I can actually adjust the strength of this uh, it looks a bit rowdy now so I'll probably reduce this to like 1 okay and now we can really oh that's way too much maybe 4 now we can really just adjust the roughness of our snow we can see we're getting there um, what else we might want to increase the number of points even more to do that we need to type in 7 here and that will give us even men more points although you don't want to go overboard here maybe I'll set the radius to 0 0.1 and now it should be totally dynamic if I pick something up you can see I can move it around without any issues uh, although the radius is too much for my liking I'll probably set it to 0 0.05 uh, yep, just because the bigger the radius, the more the cutoff here. You can see the more the snow intrudes below the object. So that's how you can think about this. Oh, that's way too much. Oh, and uh, this shouldn't be set to amount, it should be set to size. In which case, we want a size of around 0 0.1, maybe even finer than that, 0 0.01, which gives us very fine noise. Uh, don't want to overdo it. I guess 0 0.5 might be fine. Uh, yeah, that looks good. Uh, except the our snow is very thin so to boost that up what we're going to do and usually want this threshold value on the volume to match a bit higher something like uh, or do you really uh, it might be an issue with this uh, thin snow so to boost the actual depth of the snow uh, we're going to actually duplicate these points after the set position so I'll take all of this move it out and what I'm going to use is instance on points Oops, that's not it. Instance on points and a mesh line, just to get like a line. Plug this into points, I guess, and then uh, just take this geometry to be instanced, and just choose a join geometry. Or rather, you don't even have to. You can just plug these instances into here. Although you do need to realize them, so realize instances right here. And now, uh, if I set this to endpoints. You can see that I can change the endpoints of this and essentially change the size of our snow. Now, I don't want this count to be too high. I basically want just enough that you cannot see the layers. There's two layers here and now I cannot see them anymore. Uh, but as you increase it, you're going to want to bump up the count here. So uh, that is that. Now we should have something and you can see it's fairly performant. I'd say this is fine. Uh, I might want to reduce the radius of these points even more. So I'm 0 0.03, so we don't get so much cut off. Uh, in that case, we might want to also increase this value. Depends on how much snow we want, really. We just want this to be solid. I'll maybe play around with the scale. And really, this is the point at which you can just have fun. Have fun with it. Uh, it's all up to you to get the best snow, or just the kind of snow you want. Uh, there are some picks that are super sharp. To fix that, it is easier just to add a subdivide modifier afterwards because currently this geometry here isn't that fine. Uh, or you can, I guess you could also change the threshold here. I think that's what it influences if I change it to less. Or rather maybe the adaptivity. I know one of these values had to do with that, but nah. Let's just leave that at zero and just subdivide it. Add a subdivision modifier afterwards. If I can find that subdivide surface. And now you can see that when I do add that, uh, it sort of softens the snow up in some places. And that is what we want. Uh, back to the nodes over here. What else should we actually need to do? You can play around with this radius until you get... Oh, that's way too much. I'll actually disable this for now. 0 0.05 is fine. Uh, you don't want to go too fine because then you'd also have to increase the number of points. Something like this looks fine to me. 0.03. I mean, I can play around with this for a while. <laughs> uh, you would need to, I suppose. Just play around with these settings. Uh, I guess I can reduce the radius, the voxel size rather, if I boost that up. Uh, maybe decrease it. No. Yeah, that's actually fine. I would just need to increase the number of counts here until we cannot see those lines anymore. And now we're getting fairly smooth snow. 
However, do be aware that if the angle is too sharp, like over here, and you don't have enough counts, you see some bending happening. Uh, but yeah, this is basically the gist of it when it comes to the snow itself. Uh, now we can actually make this look a bit better uh, if we give it the proper shading. So go into the shading, uh, zoom into here, uh, give it a material, uh, just call this one snow. And you actually need to give this to the geometry itself, so back in the geometry nodes after everything. Uh, just set material. I guess it'd be over here. Oh, no, it should be over here. Set, set that to snow. And in the shading you can just sort of give it a noise texture. Uh, you need to use a bump map however, because uh, the noise texture just gives a factor. Uh, the bump map will turn height into normals. And I guess I will need to see this in something that's like cycles, just so you can actually see these results. GPU compute, uh, light paths, fast global illumination for slightly faster rendering. I guess we also need to give it a sun. I'll just give it a sky texture. Okay, and now I need to definitely reduce the strength of this map. Um, well, first of all, let me preview this. If I just plug it into surface, I can just see what's happening only here. Uh, I'll probably increase the detail, decrease, give it some roughness and really change the scale uh, okay let's go ahead and preview this it is way too high because this strength should be something like 0 0.2 okay i think that looks pretty snow like however uh, for snow i would actually change the specular i would use a voronoi texture if i plug the distance into the surface you can see what it outputs and if i just set it to uh, or was it yeah, if I just set it to Mikoski, you can see it gives these cool sparkles. If I just increase the scale really high up and pump this through a color ramp, uh, which I will flip the ends off, we can s uh, specify these tiny little points, which will be like sparkles on our surface. And then that will just control specularity. Minimum roughness. And then if I just plug in the BSDF, uh, basically our surface will sparkle on random location due to like ice crystals and stuff. Maybe I'll increase the scale even more. Yeah, and that looks like good snow to me at least. Uh, and it's all fairly performant, I think. I can still move things around. Uh, even though I am subdividing the snow dynamically. Uh, there's really no point to subdivide it right now. So Oh no, I'm not actually subdividing it. Well, there you go. So really play around with this. Uh, you can get some pretty cool effects, I think. Just plug out in the geometry nodes just all of this into your uh, modifier stack. So for example, you'd want to have a control for the subdivisions. Uh, very simple to do that. Just take this, plug the subdivisions out, and now you can control it for the modifier stack and do this for everything. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, one more thing, if you notice, when I move this monkey out of the range over here, it spawns a little snow at the center of our object. That is because rays that don't hit anything, uh, just get moved to 0, 0, 0 over here, where we do set position. Uh, yep, you see that? Because now the rays are getting fired from here as well, due to the bounding box that they're missing, going into infinity, and it's just setting them to 0. Uh, one way to fix this is just to move the object origin of the plane. To do that, just go into tool, effect only origin, and now if I just move the origin of this plane down, uh, you will no longer see that, it will just be hidden. Uh, so another thing you're gonna notice is if the object that is uh, uh, that you're blocking the snow with is something like a plane, uh, you'll see it does this weird thing where it jitters, and if I subdivide it in the middle and then pull it up, uh, that will fix itself, sort of. Uh, the reason that is happening is because the bounding box we're using to cast the rays is hugging this geometry way too tightly. Uh, and because you can see it's just a flat plane, it's just hugging it way too tightly. To fix that, uh, right after uh, the separate geometry and before the subdivide mesh, we just want to plug in a transform that uh, shifts the bounding box on the Z ever so slightly. You know, just enough to uh, prevent that from happening. By the way, if you're using Blender uh, 3.1, you can actually get some patches in the snow. What I mean by that is just using a set position uh, right before the set, uh, the, set, uh, the set shade smooth, or rather right before the noise you add over here. So over here, if you add a set position 
and then you copy this noise texture and plug it through a combine XYZ I can plug the factor to Z and then when I do this you can see I can uh, make the noise a bit finer and then if I use a map range I can actually control where the top of the snow is and see this is how you can get that effect that it's like um, there's this patches around there's a couple of patches that don't have snow uh, yep and the problem is that now the monkey gets really messed up because it really wasn't made for this uh, in order to fix that I'm just gonna narrow the range of these patches a little bit uh, we can use selection this is a part for uh, blender 3.1 it has the mesh island node and if I plug that in through a mat node set to compare yet again uh, the mesh island basically returns a unique number for each connected mesh set it to zero because this is index zero this is I think it's based off of height uh, I can actually test that right now yep so it's based off of height uh, and because the snow is usually at the bottom it would be indexed zero we can now just sort of uh, give it a little bit of noise like this a little bit of patches if I do connect the meshes however it might mess up a little bit because there's suddenly a single mesh so you need to be careful when using that but yeah that's one way to get patches on the snow thanks for watching I guess and uh, subscribe for more bye